Turning back to the U.S. now, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is one of, if not the most powerful woman in American politics. A new book looks at her legacy and takes us behind the scenes of some of the biggest political events during the last few years. It's titled Madam Speaker Nancy Pelosi and the Lessons of Power, and it hits the store shelves today. Susan Page is USA Today's Washington bureau chief. She wrote the book and she is here to join us to talk about it. Uh, good to see you, Susan. Hey, Vlad, it's great to be back with you. So let's uh, dig right into the book. We find out in the first chapter that <laughs> Speaker Pelosi uh, put off her plans to retire when President Trump won the 2016 election. Uh, that was sort of fascinating to me. Describe what went into that decision. And of course, we all know, because we saw it play out on our TV screens, her interactions with President Trump uh, that happened um, throughout the course of the presidency while you were essentially researching and writing this book. There's some famous images, of course, mm -hmm. of her pointing her finger at President Trump um, in that briefing room and that one infamous moment when they were all sitting in the Oval Office um, and she sharply rebuked the president. Uh, tell me what you learned. Well, you, they, they had a tough relationship from the start. Election night 2016, very few people knew that Nancy Pelosi was making plans to step down. She had decided it was time to do other things. She was 76 years old. That night, not Hillary Clinton elected president as she expected, but uh, but uh, Donald Trump, she said it was like the kick of a mule, That not metaphorically, that physically she felt like she was being kicked by a mule. And by the end of the night, she decided she would not step down, that she would stick around. And she, of course, became the face of the Democratic opposition to President Trump for the next four years. And the book also details how she handled the former president's first impeachment. And you write that her moves were very calculated, which is kind of a bit of a theme throughout the book and her career. Well, you know, she, uh, she resisted impeachment, that first impeachment, for a long time, she thought it didn't make sense with the Constitution. She had thought that the Clinton impeachment hadn't made sense either. She didn't think it made political sense either. We know that the Clinton impeachment had rebounded against Republicans. She feared that could happen with Democrats this time around. But there came a point after the release of that controversial phone call with the leader of Ukraine that the forces were impossible to hold back. Democrats went ahead with that first impeachment, but on a timetable and with a, uh, with, a, with a reach that Nancy Pelosi decided, and then, of course, to everyone's surprise, a historic, unprecedented second impeachment trial after the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. So truly an historic figure for the speaker to have overseen two impeachments of the same president. Another revelation uh, that I learned last week was that she wanted a late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg to lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda. That came from your book. She would have been the first woman to do so. But the then Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said no. Tell us about that conversation. Well, you know, Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi do not have what you would call a close and friendly relationship. They've been at loggerheads for many years uh, as leaders of, of different parties uh, in different chambers of of Congress. Nancy Pelosi, when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, Nancy Pelosi wanted to have her lie in state in the rotunda, a great honor. But as Mitch McConnell, but it required Mitch McConnell's acquiescence or agreement. When she asked Mitch McConnell uh, to allow that to happen, he said no, because no Supreme Court justice had been honored in that way in the past. Well, Nancy Pelosi went ahead and had Ruth Bader Ginsburg lie in state, but she had to do it in statuary hall, not in the rotunda. She had to do it on the House side of the Capitol because of Mitch McConnell's uh, refusal to allow it to happen in the rotunda. Wow. This is also fascinating. Um, so this is another fascinating bit from your book, Speaker Pelosi's relationship with Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the so-called squad that comes up in the book. And you write uh, that before one of your interviews, they had a disagreement over a vote on an immigration bill. And the speaker said to you, you know, some people come here to pose for holy pictures. <laughs> And then she sort of changed her voice into sort of a mocking kind of tone. And she said, see how perfect I am and how pure. You wrote that you had never seen her that agitated. Can you tell us about that moment? Yeah, that, you know, Nancy Pelosi is an incredibly disciplined figure. It's one of the things that makes her a tough interview. But this interview happened to fall uh, rec uh, on the same day, on the afternoon of a blow up in the House Democratic Caucus between the members of the squad Nancy Pelosi and other Democrats in the caucus. So she was all wound up when I when I got there. And she clearly um, 
She said that some of these newer members of Congress didn't understand. They wanted to make fine pâté, whereas she was making sausage. And sausage was a harder, mm -hmm. rougher process that involved making compromises to get things done. You know, one of the interesting things, though, is she also told me that she saw herself in AOC, especially when she was a young figure, mm. a, a young fig person uh, demonstrating on behalf of things like universal health care, when she couldn't understand why politicians would make these compromises and accept half a loaf. But once she was speaker, once she was leading the House Democrats, she understood that process, that sometimes you took a half a loaf to get something done. It's so fascinating. And Susan, as you know, uh, Speaker Pelosi was born into politics. Her dad was the mayor of Baltimore. He was also a congressman from Maryland. Um, but but I wonder, you know, it's, it's so interesting to me, and that's why I love books like yours, because here you have Speaker Pelosi saying essentially that she's there to make the sausage. And it is true that in the course of the last 20 years or so in American politics, especially in the House of Representatives, um, that a lot of members get elected and they don't do a whole lot except appear on television and, you know, use social media um, as opposed to the hard work of actually getting legislation passed. But I also wonder if there's a little bit of that inherent in politician in politics anyway. In other words, I remember, you know, reading about Adam Clayton Powell, for example, in the 1950s and 60s and how when Charles Rangel came into Congress, you know, there was this sort of, they were at loggerheads because here's Charlie Rangel, the young firebrand, and here's Adam Clayton Powell, the civil rights leader, but who at this point in his late in his career was, you know, had been through all the things that politicians end up uh, being once they're in office for a very, very long period of time. And then what happened to Charlie Rangel? He became exactly the same thing that he accused Adam Clayton Powell. In other words, it, it's just a cycle. I mean, does she see it that way? Well, and that's such an interesting history you're telling there. That's so great that you have that that sense of history and that and that smartness. Um, you know, I think there are different kinds of politicians. There are politicians like Nancy Pelosi who do what it takes to get things done. There are politicians like Bernie Sanders, for instance, who was a member of the House before he went through this to the Senate, who has a vision, who articulates a vision, who's pretty uncompromising. That doesn't usually lead to legislation getting done. But, you know, Bernie Sanders supporters would tell you that he has succeeded in moving the whole Democratic Party to the left. So Nancy Pelosi is Nancy Pelosi. Maybe AOC is a little more like Bernie Sanders. Hmm. Um, you spent an awful lot of time with her, uh, mm -hmm. even not just for this book, but sort of before. Was there anything that surprised you at all throughout the interviews? Oh, you know, the biggest surprise for me in doing this book was her mother. Big Nancy D'Alessandro, mm. because while she reflects a lot of lessons she learned from her father, the legendary mayor of Baltimore, she learned a lot of lessons from her mother, who was restless and smart, who always wanted to be a lawyer but never managed to get to law school. Nancy Pelosi told me that if her mother were born today, she would be president of the United States. Mm. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's fascinating. Uh, Susan Page. Um, just so much in that book. It, uh, it's really amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you, Anne Marie. So, the book, Madam Speaker, Nancy Pelosi and the Lessons of Power, is on sale today.